Hi, and welcome to the 13th of July, 2022 um, uh, SERP Manager bi-weekly dev meeting, which is happening every two weeks. Um, on this meeting, we talk about the current, currently developed feature by the community, and we uh, chat about what's going on, like releases, for example. And this meeting abides by the CNCF Code of Conduct. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Did I miss anything else? No. I, um, we have an agenda uh, that uh, you are free to contribute to, um, both in notes or in new items. The agenda, I'll, I'll share it again in the chat. And yes, that's the time to uh, have introductions from uh, people who want to introduce themselves. themselves. So I'll uh, give a few minutes if you want to introduce yourself. Okay, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm, I'm Mel, I work on the search manager team at Jetstack and I am one of the maintainers. Who wants to go next? Who wants to introduce themselves? Hi, guys. My name is Denis. I'm from Flant. It's a Russia company. Uh, and uh, I want to discuss about my PR, about a certificate of NREF in a uh, certificate resource. We uh, use them in our production and uh, wants to <laughs> include to maybe next release. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, guys. Um, we, would you like me to add a, an item to the agenda so that we can discuss this? Uh, or is, it, is there already... It's already there. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Great. So thank you for, uh, your, uh, for coming to the meeting. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else want to uh, introduce themselves? Yeah, hi. I'm Neil Witts. Uh, work at Morgan Stanley. We're, we're uh, we run Bolt, and uh, we're looking at cert manager and integration. Um, in interested in this meeting because we we've got some um, audit items about using static credentials, and I'm hoping what Mayo's proposing will 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 solve that for us. Thanks. Thank you very much for uh, introducing yourself. Thanks. Uh, do would anyone want to uh, introduce themselves? I think everyone else is from Jetstack, oh. and oh, yeah. most of us are set manager maintainers. So, I mean, hi, I'm Jake, but I'm a set manager maintainer. I work at Jetstack. Nice, thank you, Jake. So, I guess I can proceed with the agenda items. Uh, Finalize new roadmap. I'm not sure who wrote this. I think it was added by Joachim just before he went on holiday, and I think we kind of agreed that we'll just like, um, is there like there should be the actual roadmap should be linked there, and I think the idea is that we'll just like go over it and actually PR the contents of of that document um, to you know the roadmap file that we have in Search Manager repo. Um, Okay. So, so I guess. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I guess maybe we want to like just I don't know share the screen like briefly go over it and just like agree on the fact that this is like the final state and I I think I said I will once we've done that I'm just gonna like make the PR and we can merge it um, because it was I think it's needed also for CNC incubation and like the PR needs to be merged and I think somebody somewhere is actually waiting for this to happen to. After, um, after it's been merged, I will update the incubation proposal document to tell Ricardo about it. He was a sponsor at the CNCF. Okay, so I'll I'll share my screen right now. You should be able to see my screen. Um, I opened the document. So the goal of this document, it's a document that will it it's called roadmap.md on the site manager repository at the root of the repository, and we aim at updating it with the latest 
um, things that we want to do as as the sub manager community and we are doing it right now because it is required for the cncf incubation process it needs the roadmap needs to be i think agreed upon and presented to the community i'm not sure no it just needs to exist really okay exists okay shall i go over each item From high what... point of. Sorry, what? Sorry, I'm not exactly sure how to proceed with this. I think, like, like, maybe, like, from a high point of view, like, you, we can just, like, I don't know, you could go over the items and ask if anybody has any questions or things like okay. that. Um, I guess okay, so that I'll people that. who have questions can ask them. Okay, so we have how many? Six different areas, areas of improvement in Insert Manager. I don't know if the order matters, uh, but the first area is integration with other projects in the cloud native landscape. And that includes working better. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, sorry. So this document is not shared in with the community. Uh, apologies. I uh, could you could you uh, add permissions, Erbe? Thank you. So you will see the document very very soon. So what I, what I'm sharing with the screen sharing is yeah the list of six areas. This is going to be in the roadmap.md file. So first, as I said, better integrations with external projects such as Linkerd and Cilium, uh, because service meshes are um, a big use, service meshes are a big certificate uh, users, and Site Manager provides these certificates. Adoption of uh, upstream APIs, for example, the Gateway API, which was implemented a few months ago, and uh, uh, we also updated it to the latest version. I think it's V1 beta 1 or alpha 1, sorry, beta 1. Uh, but also the CSR, up, the upstream CSR, the certificate signing request that exists, has been existing in the Kubernetes API for a long time. And other topics. The third one is extensibility. Uh, um, extensibility in the sense of letting users uh, do more with with Cert Manager. Currently, for example, you can create your own issuer, and uh, an issuer is something that is something that integrates with your with some CA, for example. Uh, which is your so sorry uh, vault vault is uh, can act as an issuer and there is an integration for vault it, it, it is in, it is part of cert manager but we're trying to get more adoption uh, in terms of external issuers you can also extend cert manager with what we call webhook dns dns01 webhooks uh, it's it's called external dns plugin Oh no, sorry. I'm I'm very confused with uh, these items, so I will just keep to PKI life life cycle. Um, I don't have anything to say on PKI life cycle. Sorry. And your you and user experience, that's something I know about. We want both uh, from the contributor side and also the uh, user, the cert manager user, the person who tries cert manager for the first time. And finally, developer experience, I'm not sure. It seems to overlap with improve the new contributor experience, so I'm not sure. Uh, developer experience, so yeah, we, we have been having many troubles with flackiness in our CI, and also the build system hasn't been great for a while. At, at least maybe until we changed it to make and we moved to Bazel. So these are um, areas we want to improve on. 
uh, would anyone add something to what I said? Okay, then. So I'll, uh, any comments, any questions? Okay. I will close my screen sharing and continue with, uh, oh, should I continue sh screen sharing actually? Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, a, that's no. a no. No, 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 I think you should, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'll try to document again. Okay, so we let's move on to the next agenda item. Discuss delayed 1.9 1. 1 release. I think 1.9 was due on uh, June 8th, and we are now July 13th. Well, 6th of July, I think, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is could could uh, who wants to talk about this? Please help me. I think it's currently the case that we've, um, we've like merged a couple of things to release one one next branch, and we just want to release one nine branch, and we just want to give a bit of time um, for things to stabilize. Yeah, it was basically just, I put this item in to just give an update on 1.9 because, so on the day, on the day we, that I came to release, right, we just had some, so we have automated testing that's continuously running and we have in our release process that we will not release if it's like in a red state. So it was in a red state when I came to release. So we delayed it. Uh, in the meantime, there's been some cherry fix to the release branch to fix some of the flaky tests. And um, I personally believe it's in a position to release now. So that was basically I just wanted to talk to the community and mostly and the other maintainers today and see if there was appetite for a release because I personally think we should release it now. Yeah, I, I think we are now in consensus um, with the idea of releasing, right? I, yeah. Well, I just wanted to find out whether there was consensus, because it's just me. <laughs> I'm part of the consensus then. I personally still yeah, vote yeah. no. I'm just... Go ahead, go ahead. I think um, still quite flaky, I'd say. Definitely, definitely, but we but should. We should. Uh, um, so on our roadmap that we just talked about, one of the items on there is zero flaky tests, and we should focus a lot of our effort on this over the next uh, release cycle. But either we just don't release one point nine ever until we do all the tests, or we release where there have been. There have been test runs that have completely passed, but uh, they're not that. <laughs> not that. They don't have yeah. another. Okay, I'm not sure what the what the action should be. Should we release in a few days, or hmm, or can we? So me, Eva, and Ashley have voted yes to release. Josh voted no to release. Okay, so we if we move from a consensus to a democratic vote, then okay, let's 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 release. Well, okay, the action. Okay, the action is then I'll put a final vote in the Slack channel Thanks. because otherwise we will just be uh, talking to whoever is in this call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apologies for this. I um, I propose to move to the next item. 
I um I'm I, I'm conscious that the next item, which is this design vault issuer broken with Kubernetes one twenty four, might take some time. Might take some time. So um, I propose that Dennis, you uh, you, you would you like to talk about the PR fifty one fifty eight before um, before my item? It's not a problem if you want. Uh, so, awesome. uh, okay, uh, uh, we develop a Kubernetes platform uh, named the Chaos. We use them, uh, and uh, we have some problems because uh, our platform uses a uh, certain manager to. Uh, uh, solve problems with certificates uh, and our components like uh, Grafana, like uh, Prometheus use uh, certificates from cert manager, uh, especially uh, less encrypted. So we don't need to uh, delete secrets when uh, certificates was deleted. But our clients, uh, especially who use uh, review uh, namespaces, uh, generate tons of uh, our fun secrets, and uh, we need uh, uh, to be able to delete them. And we, uh, 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 at first time, we use uh, global uh, CLI parameter. Uh, one second. Enable certificate on a ref. But uh, we have problem with our components because uh, our uh, secrets are removed too. And uh, sometimes we have problems with uh, Let's Encrypt. So we proposed solution to uh, add uh, field to CRD certificate to enable uh, deletion of uh, appropriated secret uh, when a certificate is deleted per certificate. And now we use uh, this solution in our clusters. It uh, works uh, fine, and our problems we solved. But I think uh, we need to use <laughs> more widely than only in our installations. <laughs> Sorry for my bad English, guys. <laughs> so that's so I don't understand it. Uh, the cluster wide, so for, for all the certificates in your cluster, uh, the, the, so there is this flag enable certificate owner ref, which uh -huh. people can use if they want to do what, what you said, but you don't want this for every certificate yes only for some of them yes so uh, uh, yeah. our problem is uh, when uh, certificates in review uh, namespaces was deleted we have tons of uh, our fun secrets and uh, kubernetes api was slow <laughs> yeah that makes sense in one cluster, we have about uh, 10,000 uh, R-funded secrets <laughs> in all known spaces. <laughs> it was a big problem. Have you tried like building any kind of controller that would, for example, look for like deletion events for certain certificates and would just like clean up? The yes, system? we used uh, before the solution. But uh, uh, for us, we can use this solution for our certificates, but but for client certificates, it's all out of scope in our product. Because you can't label them for the controller to pick them up, or because the controller can't access. It may be a solution. Okay, so I. I'm being honest. I, I I did not check this PR out before the meeting, so uh, this is very new to me. So I propose that we have a discussion either on Slack or um, or via uh, on a call to clarify this. Uh, I I could help with this if you like. Yes, it 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 will be good. Okay. Um, so maybe from my side. Um, I think the first thing would be a, a design document. Um, my opinion. Um, I think. Um, I think the feature makes sense to me. 
generally, but I think I want to spend a bit more time um, yeah, thinking about it some more because um, there's definitely some edge cases that can <clears throat> come about. I think you mentioned on the in a comment further down maybe. Um, and then you have the kind of is this is probably going to be an alpha field and graduation and all those kind of things. Um, I would almost also be interested in knowing why um, the CSI driver didn't work for you, or if you haven't tried it yet, trying the CSI driver and maybe um, that resolves all your problems. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, action, I will ping you on Slack and we'll take it from there. I propose to move to the, to the last item, the design vault issue were broken in Kubernetes 124. The, um, I will open the document so that you can read along with me. Uh, there are a few people on the call that came for this. Uh, so I, yeah, I am happy that they joined. Thank you, Neil and Peter. And hope I hope I'm not missing anyone for coming uh, to check this out. So yeah, the in 124, Kubernetes will stop creating these default service account secrets containing a token. Um, this token has always been used by cert manager to uh, in, in, in conjunction with the vault issuer. So whenever you use the vault issuer, you will be using this default secret service account token. This token has is special because it, it is not bound in time or in workload or uh, there is no specific audience in this token. I think, or maybe I'm, I'm anyway, uh, anyways, it's, it's a, so that that's the reason, for example, for nail to be here today, the, the audit you mentioned is, I think I, I understand, as I understand it, these long lived tokens are not acceptable in, in this, in your setup. So, uh, it's a problem for security teams. It's also a problem for anyone update, uh, upgrading to Kubernetes 124. We have, so I have listed three different solutions. Yeah, three different solutions. One is about the, the first solution, number one, is we let, uh, instead of having this secret ref, we don't create the t token beforehand, and we we give cert manager a serve a secret name service ser uh, service account name, and cert manager will do a token request to the API server, and will get a token on behalf of whoever is using the vault issuer, and. We thought at the very beginning that this was a very, very bad idea because just imagine you could, using the vault issuer, you would be able to issue a token or have a, a get a token um, from any service account for, uh, in the cluster. But then this is, this is written in the solution one. The solution for that is to um not do that so it matter won't be able by default to create any token for any service service account you will have as a second step after installing Cert manager you will have to add a new rbac rule to allow Cert manager to request tokens for this specific service account that you plan on using with the vault issuer um and so that was the solution one. It, the, I, I don't think there is any security, major security risk because of this 
RBAC rule that we asked user to to um, apply. They do it because they know what they're doing. They and they put the name, the specific name of the service account they created for Vault that doesn't have any privileges. And search manager won't be able to create any other token from any other service account. Is there any uh, comments on, on this solution? Very quickly, the, the role binding there, should that not be bound to cert manager's service account rather than the Vault SA that you're trying to impersonate? Uh, uh, yes, uh, it is. Wait, did, what did I do? No, no, it is. So um, what did I do? So the role looks correct, but the role binding, the subject. So this should the this. subject not be cert manager? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Because we're right. giving, oh, that's, so this is wrong. I will fix this. Uh, uh, I'll comment wrong. It's actually the cert manager a service account that is given the power to create new tokens. Yeah. Um, and and specifically only for this Vault SA. So in this case, I created a service account that I will be referring to in the Vault issuer, and the 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 issue the service account is called Vault SA. And so measure will create a, and and it, it is a challenging solution because we need to rotate this token manually. We don't have Kubelet doing it for us. Uh, I don't know if it's oh, a big deal. Repeat that again. You don't have Kubelet. So, the cube uh, usually when so you can what uh, th this is solution three. In solution three, we don't uh, do this, and we defer uh, the creation of projected tokens or tokens in general to the kubelet by the means of a volume projected. So th this, okay. is, this is what I'm referring to. In this case, the kubelet will be rotating uh, the token before the expiration of um, th this expiration here. Uh, and it will yeah, change the, the token that is on the disk. So that's, it, it is a, it's good because we don't need to rotate um but it is a solution solution three so I'll, I'll present solution three right now solution three is about using a new um, another mechanism in, in kubernetes called volume projected tokens i i call them so it's it's this api here something you can add to the search measure pod you can you can ask the cube. So the, the kubelet, when it sees this pod, it, it will use the service account of the pod. That would be cert manager in this case. And it will create a, a new token. So uh, the, the pod itself will have already have a, a token, a default token at a, at a, at some location. I, I can't remember. It's a default location and cert manager will be using this. But for Vault, we create a different token, also using the same service accounts. But this time, we use a different path on disk, which we will have to specify in the Vault issuer when we create the Vault issuer. And we can set a different expiry. And the most, the most, uh, the biggest difference is the audience. And this is where it 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 breaks. Uh, this is something I think Neil, you discovered. Yesterday, right? Yeah, the, 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 there's two ways you could authenticate to Vault. So one is almost like a pass-through mode where the token gets sent to Vault and it gets sent straight back to the Kubernetes API server. In in that case, the audience. So this is the token review API. It, it has to be the Kubernetes service or default service. Um, uh, audience. If it's anything else, then the Kubernetes API server doesn't uh, authenticate that token and comes back as failed. The, there, there is a second way we could authenticate into Vault, and that's to use um, Vault's JOT authentication method. Uh, and then the audience would just, as long as, I guess, Vault's got the correct certificates, that should work. 
and then this approach may be may be valid. Um, that, that, is, that is actually something I I took a look at a long time ago. I, I was, you're right, uh, in Kubernetes, if you use Vault, you can use a static token or you can use the Kubernetes authentication or you can use JWT authentication. And I, I will try to re yeah. find what... Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so the... the yeah, Kub Kubernetes uh, Vault Vault will successfully authenticate with projected volume tokens, but but the audience has to be correct. Uh, that, that's what we found in the past. That that may change with newer versions of Kubernetes. That surprises me. That sounds like a problem with the Vault on the Vault side. I think Vault is doing a token review against Kubernetes with the given token. Yeah. The yeah. so so the 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 token when you. When you look at the content, uh, the, the audience, um, if if the audience is not the what the API server is expecting, the Kubernetes API server, then then it won't work. If if you get a projected volume token and that has the audience of the default one, then then that works. And we, we were testing with an older version of Kubernetes, so and it, that may differ across different types of Kubernetes implementations. Yeah, no, I say that because the token review API, you can you give the set of audiences you're expecting. Um, okay. Um, so it might be that the faults behaving badly or... Um, or it might be yeah. we're testing it wrong. Um, yeah. We, we can do some more testing uh, um, over the next week. Okay, so... Um before doing the solution one which is very involved in terms of implementation um, let's continue investigating the J J -O -O sorry the kubernetes oath well, well, so um, whether we can still use the protected volume token method and yeah and and see well let's continue investigating are we okay with this? We'll, we'll have a look. Maybe there is a parameter we missed off the testing. For we, we were testing direct against the Kubernetes API server, so we'll, we'll take a bit more digging into it. Yeah. Okay, and then we can. It's not something I would recommend, or maybe you can, but the JWT method would also work in this case. You're right. It's a bit more work to. It's it's a bit different to uh, set up, but it's the yeah, same we, mechanism in the end. Yeah, we, 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 the way we would like to set cert manager up is to give the um, service account, which is connecting in, the ability to be like an auth delegator. So, it, its token can it basically, basically Vault can just pass through the token from cert manager. And, and and that's got the permissions to be able to um, do a token review on, on that token. Um, so, you know, if, if effectively, we, we don't need to store service account tokens in Vault. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we have, unless anyone have any thoughts, other thoughts on, on this, I didn't present I, solution two because it's a an, um, a worst solution. It's it's even it's solution solution three would be a better solution. I um I quite like solution one. Um, I think from my perspective, it makes sense in a way from like a user perspective. I think it's quite clear. Um, you know, I'm a platform engineer in, in charge of setting up the issuers. I can easy, like, easily reference what service accounts to use. And as a, another platform engineer that's in charge of security, that in charge of setting the R back or what have you, it's very clear that I'm giving cert manager permissions to um, request this particular token for whatever service account it might be. Um, I'm wary of adding um, like 
user configuration into the Cert Manager deployment, if that makes sense. Like your yeah, with yeah. the projected volume token, um, you are adding like runtime configuration, like um, into the deployment spec. If that make if that's making sense, um, the it kind of weakens the separation of concerns about like what should be like input config to the actual Cert Manager um, image or deployment or whatever, and what's actually just an actual CID. Um, so the configuration, it kind of mess it makes that a bit more messy. Um, and I think from like a, um, I don't know, like an engineering perspective, like a development perspective, the the token request, I don't know, seems like a nicer approach to me. Still, there is still some weird configuration to do. The RBAC thing is not clear. It's something you have to do. It's something, do you, so you can create a vault issuer after installing, but you will have to go back to the installing step to create this RBAC role, role um, to match the service account that you want to use in vault. I know, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I make sense, but it, it, it is yeah, still yeah no, not much I, not much yeah i understand i think i understand what you're trying to say i think i just don't um i don't buy the argument that it's as bad as it is no yeah it's not that bad I, I, I think as a as a user like you're you're doing impersonation here which is um can be um very problematic i'd say and so as a user i kind of want to expect to be touching our back if i'm doing impersonation um mm. is my feeling i mean uh, up, to, up to now we were definitely doing impersonation not in this way but we were picking up some secret uh, that could be any secret in the in the in the cluster and we were making yeah. api calls on their behalf so yes in this yeah, case I, it would be uh, yeah. more like better i guess yes i understand agree yeah Okay, so we will investigate and come back in two weeks. I, I will come back in two weeks and report on this, whether we have made progress and, or not, and whether we can proceed with uh, the, 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 there is a PR that is opened for solution one, but again, I prefer backing off and um, think a bit more like, like we're doing, think a bit more uh, whether it makes sense from a design perspective. Can I ask, uh, so, because we started the discussion with it breaks in 124, and I was trying to get my head around what, what actually breaks in 124. Um, and I, I put a comment, I think, on that GitHub thread that you had on before. Um, I think it's just a documentation issue in that Currently, you create a service account, wait for the secret to get created, grab the contents of the secret, and then give that to Vault. Um, is it not just that you, as well as creating the service account, you now have to create the secret resource? That's that's the breaking change, just there's an extra step that needs to be in documentation, or is there actually something breaking that I'm missing? I think that's um, true. Um, but we don't want service account tokens and secrets. I think that's the big driver here, unless I misunderstand. Um. Wait, it is enabled by default? Ah, no generation. So by default, you mm -hmm. won't get these secrets. So yeah, I, I didn't I didn't really analyze the uh, what, what you did is understand what is the breakage in reality, but I didn't do it yet. So I, I don't really know. I don't I don't really understand. And I agree. I the title of this document is about Kubernetes 124, and I didn't address this. Uh, so I will add for more information, and I'll try to uh, dig a bit more. I I will, I will also try and figure out if that is the solution. If it is, I'll I'll try and PR it somewhere. It's like a temporary. But yeah, I think I think the goal is that we don't want secrets lying around with tokens in. It'd be better to call the token API and get it in the video topic. 
So token API is the way forward. Forward. So it's definitely yeah. It makes sense if stock market starts using it if it's the way forward. Okay, so um, I'll try to. I I know Peter, you you have done lots of research, so I'll try to uh, help you with this and figure out whether or not it is a breaking, like it's it's going to break people and how. And we'll try to uh, add this to the document, and also improve the website. I think, as you said, it's probably a matter of documentation. I, I'm not sure, but I think we are at the end of the agenda, which means, and we are 15 minutes before the end of the meeting. Do we have any, anything else we want, anyone wanted, wanting to talk about something? Or, or shall we give ourselves 15 minutes more time, more uh, like off? Time off. No. Okay. No one interested in in uh, other comments. So I will close this community meeting. Thank you, everybody, for having attended. And thank you for leading it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That was my first time. <laughs> and please thumbs up on on YouTube, right? We, we the recordings are now properly uploaded so you can check them out if you if you like and spend some time doing it um have a great evening everybody and i will turn off the uh the how do i recording now <laughs>